And as a competitor, I'm not ducking shit. It's a competition, and my, my mission is to destroy you. It doesn't matter if I'm safe. It doesn't matter if I have a sprained ankle. I need to go out there and play. The message is always to go out there and dominate. And once the game starts and once the practice begins, you know, you're in that mode. You know, everything's a game seven. I switch my mind to something else. I switch my mode into something else. What I am when I step on that court is, you know, I become that. I am that killer snake. Stone cold, man. I had a purpose. I wanted to be one of the best basketball players to ever play. And anything else that was outside of that lane, I didn't have time for. So everything I saw, whether it was TV shows, whether it was books I read, people I talked to, Everything was done to try to learn how to become a better basketball player. Everything. Everything. And so when you have that point of view, then literally the world becomes your library to help you to become better at your craft. So at 13 years old, I had a, um, <laughs> I had a kill list. And so, you know, they used to do these rankings. It was Street and Smith basketball rankings. And I was nowhere to be found because I was like 6'4", scrawny, like 160 pounds soaking wet. So I was like 57 on the list. And so I will look at 56, 55, all the way up to number one, who these players are, what club teams they played for. So when we go on an AAU travel circuit, I, I got to hunt them down, right? And so that became my mission in high school is to check off every other person all those 56 other names, hunt them down and knock them down. I don't. I got pictures with everybody, but Kobe is the only person I got a one-on-one -on -one picture with in high school, bro. We knew then that this dude was different, bro. I remember when he was talking about on your show, like he had the kill list, right? Mm -hmm. And it's and it's funny because you know we were in roommates, and it was many times at night that this dude just didn't want to go to sleep. He just wanted to talk basketball, right? And we were about to play uh, Tim Thomas in the Charlie Weber tournament in uh, Maryland. And Tim mm -hmm. Thomas was the number one player in the country at the time. And Cole was just in a room all night, like one o'clock in the morning, just pacing around my bed like, yo, Rip, you know, tomorrow I'm gonna kill this dude. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm, like, I'm, like I'm like, Tim Thomas, like, first of all, you, we don't even play the same position as him. Right. right. But but Tim played on the wing at that time, too. Like he was surreal at, at, at that time. Right. Because he was mm -hmm. a six nine can handle the ball, ball mm -hmm. can play inside outside. He was like, man, I'm gonna kill this dude, man. He was like, after after tomorrow, it ain't gonna be no doubt in anybody's mind who the number one player in America is. Like they, they mm. saying, I ain't the number one player. Watch, mm. Rip. Watch after tomorrow night. I'm like, bro, go to sleep, man. They all thought I was absolutely crazy the day me and Shaq got in a fist fight. After that day, they were like, okay, Kobe, you're certifiable. Uh, <laughs> fist fight. Oh, yeah. Fist oh, fight. Oh, I'm not backing down. Listen, you, you want to whoop my ass or I'm a, we want to have a night. But, you know, it, there's, a, there's a level of respect. And, and for Shaq, too, by the way, that, I know he, he's told me that that day was a big turning point for him because it was like, you know, he's generally used to talking trash and saying what he wants and nobody really stepping up and challenging him on that. And when he saw me challenge him on that, he was like, this kid's crazy. Do you think if he would have had the same level of commitment to the game as you did, you guys would have had fewer feuds between each other? Yeah, because I, listen, I don't, I don't deal with people that don't commit at that level, but then act as if they do. Bob said he gonna set the tone to start the game. And you said, I'm running through Powell's fucking chest. First play of the game, I'm running through Paul Gasol. We was like, what? Man, you tripping. Like, that's your teammate. You tripping. You ain't about to do that. He said, first play of the game, I know what they're going to run. And he knew Powell's going to be the last screen. And he said, I'm running through that motherfucker. I swear, the first play of the game. <laughs> We was like, holy shit. He just went right to the middle of my chest, trying to get right through me to send a message. To, not just to me, but to his teammates. Say, like, hey, this might be my brother. I play with him, we're close, but I don't care about anything else but winning. I'm right there in front of the men's life. Wow. Yo. 
impossible is nothing to somebody who tries. Will adversity make the strong stronger or the weak weaker? Never get discouraged. Fight to the end. Till you die. How do you view competition? Like when you think about the word competition, what does that mean to you? I think of competition as people um, reaching their highest potential. Competition is always good because it helps you not to give in under the slightest struggle in life. Because life is gonna life is gonna give everybody a bad hand. No one's gonna leave here um, without being tried in life. To my children, I love you. Oh, oh God, I'm oh man. What? Is this your shortest fight ever? In any time, amateur, professional ever? Assalamu alaikum, Maida. Um, I don't know, man. Yeah, yeah, Lennox Lewis, Lennox, I'm coming for you. Mike, is it frustrating to train like you did and then have no, this in seven I didn't or eight train seconds? For this fight. I only trained probably two weeks or three weeks for this fight. I had to bury my best friend and I dedicated this fight. I wasn't going to fight, I dedicated this fight to him. I was going to rip his heart out. I'm the best ever. I'm the most brutal and vicious and most ruthless champion there's ever been. There's no one can stop me. Lynx is a conqueror. No, I'm Alexander. He's no Alexander. I'm the best ever. There's never been anybody as ruthless. I'm Sonny Liston. I'm Jack Dempsey. There's no one like me. I'm from Nairclaw. There's no one that can match me. My style is impetuous. My defense is impregnable. And I'm just ferocious. I want your heart. I want to eat his children. Praise be to Allah. Are you saying now, Mike? This video is about how on Seamer Attention, your male aggression will turn you into a fierce competitor in any realm of this earth, bro. So check this out. I want to first start off this video with saying, R.P. Kobe, he's one of the most greatest legendary people to ever walk this earth. Being so competitive and being such a great human being and being so disciplined at what he does and what he loved to do, bro, there was no one like him. And he's not the greatest of all time, I would say to my mind. I'll say it like, I'll say it actively. He's not the greatest, but he's definitely top three. I'd say it's LeBron, MJ, and then Kobe, right? But his his fucking worth at his work ethic <clears throat> completely changed his whole demeanor into how he thought about basketball, and everyone respected him because no one was doing what Kobe was doing. Like he was the ultimate competitor when it came into anything within your life. And while being on Seamer attention, this will literally take you to the highest of levels of masculinity of being the greatest man that you can possibly be because comp being competitive is it's lost now like it's not a thing anymore this modern day time i really want to like enlighten you with something right when you're really like taking care of yourself like you're eating good foods like you you're looking better you're really holding yourself to higher standards no one's doing this all of this like competitiveness is out the window within this day and age and bro these people out here is so easy to beat. Like, your average Joe is so easy to fucking beat. Like, these people are... Oh, my God, man. They're eating they're, they're eating junk food and having fucking Dr. Pepper in the morning. Bro, I done seen it all. I swear to you. These people are not hard to beat when you're on, like, retention and you're really disciplined to what you do. You're, you're not going to lose... There's no way you should lose to these people, right? If you can see anything with men in nowadays, bro... Most men don't even look like men anymore. Like, our testosterone is, like, literally decreasing as generations go by. Like, in the 90s, it was higher. In the 80s, it was higher. But it ever since, like, the 60s that they track it, it's been dropping. So, we're becoming less men and more of the feminine men. You can see feminine men everywhere you walk. I don't see stone-cold killers anymore. It's very rare to see killers. Even when I'm in the gym, I see, like, a, a super humongous big guy, right? Like, humongous. I'm talking about dudes... Popping steroids look way bigger than me, but I get more respect than them. And y'all don't even know this shit. Like, I'll go and shake their hands, and their handshake is not firm, and I dominate them just with. And I'm, bro, compared to this guy, I'm like this. And I shake his hand, and it's not firm. And I could tell it is a lack of masculinity that nobody really knows. And, bro, and competitive, and being so competitive is like, I, I just like, Kobe's like, should be the number one thing. Or number one person that is, like should come to mind when it comes to competitiveness. Because no, he didn't want to lose. He didn't care about anything but winning and what he did. And that brought him to the highest levels, bro. Being the top three in the world in the NBA. This is the amongst the greatest people of all time. You can go and watch videos of people talking about Kobe. He wasn't the average hooper. He wasn't your average any of that. He wanted to be great and he knew what he was. So he aligned his life towards it. And 
look at his life, bro. Look at how everything went up until he died, bro. Like, you guys got to really understand what this means when you... When you're so disciplined to the shit that you do and your your aggression and your fucking competitive nature comes out as a man. And it comes out way more when you're on retention. I promise you this, bro. Kobe, bro. He, bro. You know, did you, bro. I don't think y'all know, but he fought Shaq. Do you know who Shaq is? Shaq is seven foot, like 300 pounds. Kobe's like six six. Maybe 220, but for the desire, the fierce force of a man, he didn't give a fuck about that. Shaq wasn't like, Shaq was lazier. Kobe even said it. Shaq would even say it in his interviews. Kobe, Kobe was a hard working man. He'll wake up 3 a.m. just to go lift weights, everything like that. Go do what you got to do. Go train, then recover. Go to like take a nap, then go and train again. He would do this actively every single day. He'll be in a lab focused on what he did every single day. And he wanted to help um, put people higher within him, within, within him. He tried to train with the people, everything like that. All of his teammates is that. This is why when people say Kobe didn't pass the ball, that, bro, he's like, bro, his mind says like, why the fuck would I pass this buster ass dude the ball if he don't even train? He don't even really take this practice shit serious. He doesn't take this ball shit serious. Why the fuck I'm going to pass him the ball? He don't take this shit as serious as me, so I'll shoot, and I'll practice shooting over three people nonstop, and I'll take that shot before I pass it to this buster-ass dude. Not saying all the time it's, like, the right the right decision, but he fought Shaq because Shaq was lazier, and he didn't want, really want to put in that work that Kobe was putting in, and Kobe is not a bitch. He's not a ducker. He did not say, like he said in the first sentence, I'm not a ducker. I'm competitive in whatever he does. That is how you become a great man. All of these people that you see within your day in life, bro, there's no masculine, like, essence to these people. I don't sniff it. I don't, you don't feel competitiveness. You don't feel wanting, people wanting to be better than you. This is how you become greater. Like, bro, for me, I even, bro, when I went to train boxing, bro, for a little while, right out here for, like, about two two to three months right and i'm gonna go back once i start really getting some bread so i could have some more time and really start training because i want to push myself to higher limits and become the greatest human being that i could possibly can and i still train on the side don't get the game twisted i always box at least two to three times a week right because i still weight lift and i play i've been playing basketball too but when i was training bro i swear to you bro when i was on retention i'm walking into the gym and I'm looking at everyone like, yo, who is the baddest motherfucker in here? And I want to fight. Like, I swear to you. Like, I probably, and I did end up fighting, I believe, the best one in there. I swear to you. At the weight class, he was 160 at that time. I'm like 145. I still hopped in the ring with him because I am not a bitch. It's none of that. When I, when I'm, especially I was like on three weeks, four weeks, right? I was on retention and I go in, I'm feeling the best. I'm hitting the pads. I'm running all of that, all the training. It was hard as fuck training. Don't get the game twisted. The training was hard, but I took it head on every single time. But then I started messing with this girl, bro. Check me out. I started messing around with this little bitch, a uh, little white John, and she was bad. Like, I liked her. She was a pretty good person. And, but this stirred me off of what I was doing within my life. My focus at this time was boxing. I wanted to get better and better and better. I want to fight motherfuckers. Like, yo, this is the male aggression was coming out. I'm hitting the back. Bah, bah. Boxing is over. And they still let you train a little bit more, like an hour or two after. I'm still there, pop, bu like, fucking. Popping the shit until people are leaving, like until the time is leaving, and I still want to train after. That is the male aggression that you have on retention. This is a gift that you cannot give away. That you cannot give away because I gave it away, right? And check what happened, right? So I end up sparring the best boxer in this gym. And by the first round, it goes well, right? Like we're fighting, we we duking it up, you know, we filling each other out. But it's sparring. It's like I'm I'm not like at the level. I think I believe he's been training two, three years, and he's amateur. And you know, he got like he at the time I think he was like eight and zero. Oh, and bro, I'm just amateur. I'm, I'm not even amateur. I'm just trying to spar. I'm trying to fight. I don't give a fuck about none of that. So, but also you can't cheat boxing. You got to really be in it to like and live that shit. And I was training weightlifting, so my my mind was focused on a lot of like on weightlifting as well on my conditioning and body. So. Boxing was good for me as well, but I'm in the ring and we're sparring. We're doing good. Like while I'm moving around, I'm like, yeah, okay, I'm touching him up. He's touching me up, but it's not bad. Like it's not bad at all, right? And by the second round, right, and this is when after like I'm with this girl that I mentioned earlier, bro. I was fucking like Saturdays and Sundays because I didn't have time Monday through Friday. Like I said, my line, my purpose is aligned. I was still doing YouTube. I was still doing everything I had to do. I was I was working doing YouTube, weightlifting, and boxing, bro. 
this is what you get when you become a masculine man on and you're holding your seat on retention right so um basically on saturdays and sundays i'm fucking the shit out of this girl and we're fucking for bro a long time i'm busted like three nuts a night and i remember just slowly like my it felt like my my aggression was like dying down not saying I'm not going to the gym and hitting the bag and everything like that, but I was not doing it as fierce. I was not doing it as how I should be doing it. And I'm gonna leave a, another clip of Jake Paul, but also like um, Mike Tyson. I left I left cl uh, clips of Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson said, bro, he didn't have sex for five years. He abstained from sex for five years, and look who Mike Tyson became the B, bro. Nobody wanna fuck with Mike Tyson, bro. But nobody wants to be a like no one else wants to. Uh, put aside like the sex and women nobody wants to do that even me it's hard for me to stop fucking but at that time when i realized like yo bro i'm I'm like going to the gym to the boxing gym but i'm not as aggressive i'm not hitting the bag i'm more winded i'm more tired my stamina isn't as high as it normally was what it was and i'm fucking and these weeks go by bro and then i end up sparring him like two weeks later right so the first First time, right, we spar, it was everything good. Then the second time we spar, right, I get in the ring and I'm, like, more gassed, more tired. I'm fighting this dude and I'm like, what the fuck? Like, first round, I'm tired of shit. What the fuck going on? I'm still running. I'm still doing my training. I'm hitting the bag. I'm, I'm fierce like a motherfucker. But it wasn't to that level. It's like, let's say I'm here, that level of retention, you are higher. I swear to you, the, the determination to really stay focused, it's always there. It's never like, it's so rare to find when you're on retention that you have those days of like, yo, I'm sad, I'm depressed. That only happens when I'm busting, I promise you this. Like, it's so weird. Like, like to do the hard work, to do that, like the, the, the lifting and all of the fucking, I would literally lift before boxing, then go over there and they'll make you lift again. And I would train boxing, like hands on, mitt pads, uh, shadow box, everything like that included. I wasn't no bitch. I'm doing the things that I'm supposed to be doing. Energy is flowing. I'm telling you. So I'm sparring this guy. And by the second round, right? Basically, to sum up the story, I come with a right. And he slips. And I jump. I jump forward as well when I'm coming with the right to try to reach him. Because he's about 6'2". I'm 5'8". So I'm coming in. But then he slips and hits me with a slight jab. Nothing too crazy. Not like a hook. He hits me with a jab right here in my fucking liver. Bro. When I tell you that's the worst pain I ever felt in my life, bro, that shit was different. Like, I couldn't even lie. That shit was different. I back up, right? And it was like on that Ryan Garcia shit. You seen how Ryan Garcia with uh, Tank Davis, he hit him with the fucking left hook, but he hit him with a hook. I ain't get, I got hit with a jab, but I jumped, I jumped into the jab, so it hurts bad too. And I didn't flex my stomach, my abs, to, I didn't see the punch coming. So I jump into it and I take a step back. I'm like, I mean, we good. Like, I feel it. I feel it though, but I'm like, okay, we good. Five, six seconds later, like just how Ryan Garcia did, he backing up and the tank coming to him. That's how it was, literally. And then I took a knee. I'm like, I'm like, my brain went like, hold on, bro. Took a knee. And I, I'm like, yo, what the fuck? Like, I started tweaking. I couldn't even lie to you, bro. This is going to happen if you really start boxing, too. Like, not most people are coming in and they're beating everybody up. This is a guy who's ain't no and shit like that, right? But I, I, I knee, I knee down. And then I turn, like, my back. I'm like, yo, what the fuck? And I'm just laying up there, my head up. <gasps> you know when you gasping for breath and you can't get that fucking breath? You remember when you crying? You start, like, when you were a kid and you start hyperventilating like a motherfucker. You can't catch your breath. That was, like, me when I was on the ground. I'm like, <gasps> <gasps> <laughs> I'm like, <gasps> I'm trying to catch this breath. It's so hard to catch a breath when you're, like, winded and knocked out. You know what I'm talking about when you winded? It was, like, that times 10. I'm on the ground, I'm like, <gasps> like, bro, if it was a real fight, it would have been knocked down, like, knocked out, 10, like, the 10 second count would have went, but I felt like, yo, I was like, yo, what the fuck, that never happens, like, I never fall, like, what the, f like, I'm like, I was so offended with myself after that, bro, I literally, after that fight, I was doing, like, 500 crunch crunches for, like, two weeks in a row, just, I'm like, bro, that shit ain't happening again. But then something happens and then I actually have to stop working because I really need to provide rent and like start working hard as fuck. I actually had to stop hitting the gym I met, uh, a boxing gym, and I had to start working a lot. So that's what took me out of boxing. But, bro, I was so mad after that, but I realized my, what it was. You have to really realize and analyze what it was because I have stories even back then when I was in a boxing gym too. I come back, I haven't boxed in a minute. I go to the boxing gym back home. This was like a 
I believe I'm a senior in high school. I'm in the gym. I'm fighting. I'm hitting the bag. And I'm like, I'm seeing like, like when I'm hitting the bag, bro, I'm going for rounds. The bell is not like, you know, when it's like a three minute bell of training, that shit is going overboard. Like I'm, I'm still fighting. I'm still hitting the bag. And, and then my coach comes and calls me like for pad work and shit. Bro, I'm hitting the mitts. The the bell keeps ringing. I have so much energy, so much drive, so much determination, so much focus on what he was telling me. Pat, it just kept going, and he was like, he was like, hold on, take the break, take the break. I'm like, nah, bro, like I'm good. I don't need no break. Like I'm like, yo, I could go for rounds doing this shit. And and excuse me. And then after all of that, bro, he's like, nah, take a break, take a break. And it happened like three times. I'm like, okay, I'll take the breaks. So then after I'm done training, I sit down because these were like some big guys coming to go train in the spar at the gym from like uh, miles away, like uh, hours away and shit. So I'm watching these guys. I'm like, yo, I want to be a fucking warrior. I want to fight like that, man. I want to fight and become great. You know what I'm saying? You get this certain things going on with like with your fucking brain on seam retention after a while. I was probably like on a three weeks to a month feeling this way. Just like you really determined, focused. I ain't have no bitches at that time, bro. I was so focused. So I understood so many different times when I was playing sports and this, that. And when I held on to my seed, I, I was great. I was great at what I did. Literally, boxers say this. Bro, boxers, um, especially boxers because it's a known rule. But other sports, not a lot of people know about this shit. There's, like a lot, there's some NBA players that talk about this. Even just rappers, like even dumb fuck rappers know about this shit sometimes. And they try to spit the game, but people just... Like, brush it off, off like this dude's just talking some bullshit. Because people don't know better. Nobody knows this game. So once you really analyze and understand this shit, you will know better for yourself. And you will separate yourself from all of these bots out here. It's not hard. I promise you this. Like, it is not hard to beat the 90% of people. It is not hard. Bro, after like two, three weeks of the gym, after they say they're going to the gym, they stop going. They go back to the Cheetos, the fucking star, the sour patches and shit. Bro, it is not hard. Please understand this, bro. And I really need you to understand at this time. Like, I'm literally thinking I want to be a fucking warrior. I want to fight. Like, like I just want to fight. Like, and even just now, right now, like, I could talk about it right now, bro. I'll be at work first thing in the morning. I wake up at 3.45 in the morning, bro. I barely, I get like six, seven hours of sleep sometimes. Like, if I get seven, I'm lucky. Like, because I'm just so busy. I'm about to edit this video, cook, and all this, that, and the third. I need me a shorty, matter of fact, in the house just to cook. I don't even want, like, to, like we'll fuck, but I won't bust. But, like, bro, I, I just need to cook, bro. I need a fucking cook. I'm tired of this shit. But I, I run off for of six, maybe five hours of sleep. Seven. I try to get as much sleep as I possibly can. Seven to eight. When I get eight, I'm a fucking monster. I'm not, I'm never tired. I'm never taking naps. Nothing, right? But, um... Like, I work. Like, that's all I'm saying. I, I work, bro. I will we'll be working, and I'll have my coffee, everything like that. And out of nowhere, I just get this rush, and I just want to fucking fight. Like, I'm just sparring. I'm just, like, practicing without my shadow box. And they're like, oh, here's the boxer. I'm like, bro, nah, I'm just, like, I need to, like, go train. Like, it's just what your body wants to do. After you do things for such a long time, you want to be great at what you do, bro. Your body naturally does this, right? Even, bro, I'm telling you this right now, on retention, you have some sort of certain things in your body is trained. After you do something for such a long time, right, You your body becomes accustomed to this shit. Like, it wants to go do it naturally, even if you don't want to do it, right? So, check it out, right? It's a Friday, like, about three weeks ago or a month ago, right? I had gotten some weed, like a gram from my friend, right? And I was just like, man, eh, might as well just smoke it for the one time. And I was super tired. I came out of work super tired. Like, I'm like, okay, I'm just taking a nap. Because it was a rest day, too. This was a whole rest day, right? I'm like, all right, I'm going to take a nap and, you know, we're good, right? But before I took a nap, I was like, yeah, let me just smoke this blunt, right? So I smoked the blunt to the face. And I don't really advocate for smoking. Smoking, don't smoke. I Prior to that one time or oh, that month, well, a month ago, like, I haven't smoked for, like, four or five months. So, I couldn't even lie to you. Like, I don't do this. Like, I don't smoke anymore. Like, my, I, I, I was on the phone with my friend. He's like, yo, you smoking a blunt? I'm like, yeah, bro. He's like, man, when the fuck you started smoking again? I'm like, man, it was just for the one time. You feel me? So, I smoked this blunt. And I'm tired. Like, I'm tired in the face. I'm looking in, the, like, my mirror. I'm like, yo, I'm tired as fuck. Like, I look tired as shit. But something told me to go hit the gym. Like, I swear to you. Like, it wasn't, like... Like, I was high as shit. Like, I'm talking about I'm fried, bro. I haven't smoked in three to four months. If you're a smoker, you take a detox. You know. You, if you know, you know. Bro, I smoked this shit to the bone. I'm fried. Like, I'm like, yo, what the fuck? I'm baking. 
but my body naturally wanted me to go to the gym. I was like, yo, let's go to the fucking gym, right? And I'm like in my head, right? I'm just sitting here. I'm like, yo, should I go to the gym right now? Like literally in my head, I'm talking to myself like, yo, should I go to the gym? Yeah, that's what we do. We got to go hit the gym. So I, it's a rest day. Instead of lifting, I went and go hit the bag for an hour and a half, two hours. And I, it was like so good. It was such a great fucking experience. I was fried. I'm in there in the zone, locked in. I look tired as shit, but I'm fucking going at it. Like I'm like, your body is naturally accustomed to the shit that you do as a man. Don't let this go over your fucking head. Don't let this, bro. Because look at society. I don't see killers. I don't see real fucking men no more. It's rare. Our testosterone levels are completely dropping. You'll see kids that are like a fucking sophomore, junior in high school. You'll think the kid is a seventh grader. I swear to you. you I, like, I couldn't lie. I was just hooping last week with my friends, right? I went back up north to go hoop and shit like that or take like for my family and to go see family and sell shoes and all sorts of things, right? But I end up hooping with my friends. And there's like a fucking like, I think it was a seventh grader who came up. And I'm thinking, and he's like hooping. He's like, yo, y'all got next is that? Bro, the motherfucker was like this big. I swear. I'm like, I'm like, yo, I'm thinking dead eyes, bro. I'm not even joking. I'm not even fucking joking. I'm thinking this kid like a fourth, fifth grade. I'm like, yo, how great? How old are you? He's like, I'm like, he, I think he said I'm 13 in the seventh grade. I'm looking at him. I'm like, what the fuck? Yo, I don't remember being that small. I'm, I'm like, yo, I don't remember being that small in the seventh grade. But he still has time to grow. But, bro, even kids in high school, I see like, You'll see them and you, you'll be like, yo, this is a fucking junior, senior? Like, what the fuck? Because if you go and, like, look at footage from people back in the day, like, fucking from 2000s below, those people, like, the seniors and shit, they did not look like they had low testosterone. They look like they had high testosterone. Fucking beard, full-on beards and this, that, and the third, bro. I'm like, yo, what the fuck? Those people look like real men at the time that they're fucking 16, 17. Shit is crazy, right? But another thing to tell you, like, to really, like, separate everything from this modern-day time is that we have testosterone, bro. So when you have higher testosterone, you feel more obligated to go do the hard things because hard things feel good. That's that's how it feels, bro. When I'm in the gym and I'm lifting weights and I'm fucking struggling, I got red all over my face, I'm hot as hell, I'm sweating, I feel amazing. I feel great. When I, when I was doing that boxing training, whenever I train, it, I just feel great. Whenever I do something hard, I just feel great. That is how it's supposed to be, bro. This is how it is as a masculine man. You nowadays it's so rare to find a real dude. And we lost what a real man is. And we lost what a real man is. Like we literally did. And and, and we kind of lost what a real man is in the perception. I don't give a fuck about all these nerds nowadays and this, that, and the third. I like I completely I'm completely over that nerd shit. Like, no, bro. When I when I see a man, when I think of a man, I think like of a fucking warrior. Like, I think of Spartans and shit. Like, you know, the leader of the Spartan. Did you ever seen the movies, the Spartan movies? Like, motherfuckers are men. Like, you have to be strong. You have to be forced. It's within us as a man. This is what separates us from a woman. Is our testosterone levels? Is that we have more testosterone and they have more um, they have more estrogen, like. This is what separates us, and this is why hard work should feel good. This is why you should be stronger. This is why you should train in your body. This is why you should take care of yourself and become and eat the right foods and all that so you can boost your testosterone and get enough sleep so that you can have a good, genuine life and live a life of never just feeling like a low testosterone fuck because trust me, I've been there. I've been there, bro. Trust me when I say this, bro. Like, that is what I see as a masculine man. You know what I'm saying? Like, as a strong man. I don't see, I don't see killers. I don't see real men out here. I'm sorry to tell you. I see computer gaming virgins by the time they're still 40 years old. This is the type of guys I see. Separate yourself from this because when you're on retention, you will naturally gravitate to the hard things. You want to do the hard things. You really want to do, like you love challenges. Like I'm telling you this right now. I've been a challenge. I've been loving challenges. Like since I was a kid, I want to hear people say, oh, I can't do this or I can't do that because it's. It lights a fire in my brain or within me. I'm like, who, motherfucker? Who can't do it? You can't do it? No, no, don't talk about me. Talk, Speak for yourself because I know I can do it. I know what I can do whatever what I feel like I want to do, right? Let me tell you from when I was a kid, bro. When I was a little computer gaming virgin, like maybe most of you guys know disrespect, right? Video games get off that shit. But when I was a little kid, played the video games all day. Bro, I wasn't just playing video games to have like fun and, you know, cute little video games. No, 
Motherfucker, I was trying to win in everything. It was crazy since I was a kid. I've been, bro, I've been known as the biggest shit talker I've ever known. Like, everything, bro. Like, I've been I've been a shit talker since I was a kid. I can't even lie. Since the Call of Duty the party get dazed. If you know about the parties, the Call of Duty parties, or if you're in the lobby, motherfuckers is coming crazy. This, that. I'm like, nah, you a bitch ass. Blah, 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 blah. You know, you talking shit on the game. Nah, I'm gonna fuck you up. Watch how I drop, like fucking 50 kills on y'all this that by the end of the game you win then you join the lot like the lobby goes crazy everybody screaming and shit i'm like ah fuck you i want bitch ass dude fuck you talking about you know shit like that that is male aggression even in virgin video games if you're playing video games at least be great at what you, like great at video games i always wanted to be good at what i do like naturally that's always how patrick was right for instance nba 2k 17 i'm the greatest of all time like within all my friends bro but then all my friends group in this and the third, we would play that game all day. And they knew who was the best. We had like a leaderboard at the end of the year, like, you know, like who was the best. And they all said like, nah, Patrick was the best on this game. No cap. Then it came this person, this person, this person. But Patrick was number one. I had people like telling me, nah, you better than him. Because me and my friends will always argue. We'll always be in the 1v1 courts. We'll always go to the stage, whatever it is. I'll pull up on my boy out of nowhere. He could be on the third game, 40 game, whatever. I'll go and drop your shit off. Yeah, remember who I am. I'm that dude on the game. This is how I was as a fucking kid. That masculine aggression. I see so many people, these nerdy fucking, oh my God, they want to be so peaceful. I don't get for what. Like, I, I don't get it. Like, why Why are so many people like soft? Like, I, I never understood it. Because even in video games, I was the best at what I did within my area of all my friends. FIFA, I was the best. Can't even fucking lie. I'll have people, all the friends that I played with, I was better than them. In most of the games, Call of Duty, I was top tier. I was really that fucking virgin, not getting enough sleep, not like not going to sleep, like fucking jerking off all day and literally playing that game all day. And I will bust your fucking ass like 2.3 KD, this, that, all the diamond skins. This, I'm a fucking virgin to the max at fucking 12, 13, 14 years old. That's what I'm saying. I was nice at whatever I wanted to do. I always wanted to be nice at what I did. That is even in video games, even... Even if you're playing fucking chess or checkers, a peaceful game, you can make it competitive. You can, like, yo, you do not want to lose to this motherfucker playing checkers or whatever. Like, you just don't want to lose. And when you lose, if you do lose, you're going to get mad like a motherfucker. you like, damn, bro, I just fucking lost, bro. Like, you feel me? That's a good thing. Because then you, you want to run it back, right? This male aggression thing has been, bro, this is engraved in us. You have to... You have to incite it and light that fire so that you become a great man. So you don't look like every fucking little soy boy virgin. You don't want to look. I don't never want to look like a computer gaming nerd. I used to look like one. I completely changed. I stopped playing that shit. But even in the games. Uh, what else games, man? Call of Duty, Black Ops, uh, uh, motherfucking 2K, all the 2Ks, FIFA. Bro, whatever game I played, I was nice at I, Fortnite, I wasn't the best at Fortnite, but I was nice. But we was in the playgrounds before there was ever creative and all that. We was in the lab working like, yo, bitch, bring your ass to the playground if you really think you nice at the game. This is how we was, bro. Especially me. I, I could say this from almost anything I did. I always wanted to be good. Soccer. T check me out with soccer, bro. I'm telling you guys some real stories that I'm not even fucking lying about. So check me out, bro. With soccer, right? I used to play soccer from when I was, like, in the second grade. Since I was a kid. Let's say kindergarten. But not seriously, right? So, from fifth grade to eighth grade, this is the time point where I take soccer completely serious. Like, I'm training. And I understood that training is what gets you better. Within boxing, within weightlifting. At this time, I didn't even know about this. Soccer was, like, the number one stem of, like, learning discipline for me. Because I didn't give up. Like, even school, you'll learn discipline. But school wasn't on my mind. I'm like, yo, I'm going to go play soccer for real. Like, or play basketball for real. So, check me out. And I've been playing basketball since I was a kid as well. So, check me out, right? I would always, like, at this time, fifth, like, sixth grade was when I really get into this, like, soccer. And I want to be great. And, you know, I had, like, older people to look up to. And it was such a great thing for me as a kid because it took me out of, like, being in trouble and shit. So, soccer was my number one thing at this time. I wanted to play for Mexico, win a World Cup. But it, I kind of outgrew soccer, right? But basically, right? Check me out. I would play soccer from when I was a kid. We would train with the soccer team, everything like that. But after training, I'll still go with my homies and play ball or play soccer for real and really do what I'm supposed to be doing because I loved it so much. It was like my passion. It was like how Kobe talked about his passion. That was my passion at the time for real. So I'm playing soccer and I line my life towards it. 
I had a neighbor. My neighbor was older than me by a year, but even then we will play, right? Say if I'm in the sixth grade, he's in the seventh grade. We'll play with guys who are like in high school. I'm talking about sophomore, junior, seniors. At that time, when you're a kid, you know, you're like 12, 13 years old. If you're playing against like a 15, 16, 17 year old, even 18 year olds, I swear these people like were huge grown to me, but they would train with me and get me better. That meant everything. That meant everything, bro. How you doing? Yeah, hi. But that meant everything to me. Like, literally getting, like, looking up to these people and getting better and actively pra practicing and training with them and playing games with them, right? So this would literally be my regimen within the summertime. Like, because this was when Kick was popping. You know, if you got Kick on the app, you have the group chat with all your homies and shit. That was how it was for me, right? So wake up dumb early before anyone else really wakes up to... We'll wake up at like 7 because in summertime, you know, you're a kid. You play video games all this time. And, but at the time, I didn't even have video game, like a video game at this time. It was weird. Um, But basically, from 6, 7, like from um 6, 7, 8th grade, I'll wake up every summer, especially in the summertime, right? Because in soccer, you don't really want to play in the cold. But I'll still play in the cold as well because I love this shit. But in the summertime, I'd wake up at like 7 and get ready to play soccer but and be by the soccer field at 9. And my, like I said, my neighbor lived by me. So I sh he'll shoot me a text on kick like, yo, you ready? I'm like, yeah, come outside. We'll walk 25, 30 minutes to the soccer field. We didn't have no cars. We I, I didn't, we didn't rock bikes. We had like these big ass bags of water. We got our uh, our soccer balls, our cleats hanging. And we got like all our, our cones and training shit. We didn't, bro. This is what we knew what we had to do to get better, right? So we would always play soccer, and we'll go and walk twenty five minutes to the field just to go do um like a little bit of cone and dribbling and getting our touch and juggling and all that and just really training a little bit. Like, let's say we train for, like, 30 minutes, and then we'll, the rest is, the like, the main session of this is to do cardio, right? So, we will run uh, this whole field. Like, I'm talking about, it's a big-ass field. We'll run for, uh, like, bro, we will run for, like, a couple miles, bro. We didn't, I, we didn't know, because at this time, there wasn't really those app tracker shits of like, you know, when you track how much you ran and shit. It was not none of that. So we knew from our field, like, yo, you run three of these, it's like a mile. But, bro, that shit was way bigger than no fucking mile. I swear to you, bro. But we did that. And we also did training for sprinting so we could become faster. So we would do like runs and sprints and just sprint against each other and try to become better. We would do juggling. We would literally go at it at juggling like if you just juggling it just touches and this that but okay if he got like 60 juggles i'm trying to get 70 juggles i'm trying to get better i'm trying to get, like like the competitive nature is what happens when you come disciplined and you want to be great at what you do bro at this time i wanted to be a fucking world cup soccer player and play for mexico that was my dream but i outgrew it but even playing like i said with these kids who were higher than me uh i'm if i'm a sixth grader playing with seventh eighth graders ninth graders fucking um excuse me sophomore junior seniors these people were all ranges there was a lot of people and they were good they weren't like bad they would play for like the the tech school out of there and i might i wanted to go play for tech but, but they fucking they didn't accept me because of my grades and shit as a kid but bro all of those guys play for tech and outside of the schools tech was like the nicest soccer team like they was known i'm like yo i'm trying to go play with them for real we didn't i didn't have enough money to go play for like leagues outside of this shit i didn't my mom would never buy that i was we was poor we was broke but I'll go to the park every day, and that took me out of everything. And by six, seventh, by bro, by sixth grade, seventh grade, especially by seventh grade, they're like, yeah, you probably like one of the best here now, because I'm still training with my boys, and they were low key better than me. And by eighth grade, it was solidified. I was like, yeah, I'm the best on this team. I was the captain of the team in eighth grade as a kid. But I worked so hard, and I understood discipline, and it brought me out my nature. I wanted to be better than the high schoolers. I wanted to be better than my friend that I worked. Literally, he lived right there. That was the competitive nature, and that's what brought it out and became a higher level. Where I'm talking about, we would train every single day. No bitch shit. Like, none of the bitch shit that y'all do, we would train every single day. Even with basketball, right? I wasn't the best at basketball, but, like, I'm nice. I ain't gonna, hold on. I am nice at ball. Like, don't get the game twisted. Like I said, I am good at everything I did. But in high school, I didn't really get to play. I got into a fight. I got suspended. So, and I even got cut one time, which was insane. But I only got to play freshman year. And my grades were really bad, too. So they didn't even want me anyways, for real, because my grades were so bad. But I understood to get better at what I did since I was a kid. I learned from soccer. Yo, you got to train to get better. 
So I understood from bull, I got to train to get better if I want to start for the team, if I want to do what I got to do to really get nice. And when I practiced and I trained with the people, I was the best one on the team, not even a question. Like I was training by myself because nobody ever wanted to do that. It's so weird how these humans work. They want to get good at something, but they don't want to put in the work in it for it. They don't want to put the they don't want to put the work in for it. It makes bro these humans. I'm sorry, like I'm a human, but I'm not one of these bad ass motherfuckers, bro. I swear they'll want everything. They want to have the abs, this, that, and the third, but they'll still eat fucking Dr Pepper in the morning with fucking um Cheetos and shit, bro. Their diet is horrible, bro. Yeah, I'm on the abs. You know, I just want it. Just please give me. I, I want all this money. Please just give me. It's not like. Like, fuck you. Like, bro, I'm telling you, when I was playing ball, nobody wanted to train. None of my homies wanted to train. I'll be in the, the LA Fitness. They'll be working out, and I already worked out. I'll get some in. But I'm like, nah, I got to really train because, like, you know, practice tomorrow. I really got to get my handles right. And I knew to stay on retention, too. When I was training and practicing, I was reten retained for, like, three weeks. Bro, I was running laps against these motherfuckers. I swear to you. I was running laps. I'm, my competitive nature got me literally into trouble. You don't even know. When I like I told you back in when I was playing like um basketball, soccer, like and even like video games, I'm a shit talker. Like I'll shit talk the shit out of you. Like I'm sorry. So I'm in practice and like they're doing a scrimmage and they had the starters already like my set up and I wasn't of those starters. So I'm like they, and they're, they're, none of those guys were better than me. They can raise their hands and say, no, I'm not better than Patrick. But they still started because the coach liked them more. My grades were bad, bro. And my attitude was kind of a little bad. But my aggressiveness on the court was always there. So my boy steals the ball from me. I'm like, all right, motherfucker, come show me something. Like, he steals the ball. And he coming. I'm like, all right, motherfucker, come out. Come show me something. Because he talking shit after, after he got the steal. I'm like, all right, motherfucker, you better show me something. Then the coach pulls me aside. Oh, go over there, do this, that, and third. I'm like... Bitch, like, you soft, too? I'm like, how the fuck the coach soft, too? I'm like, all these dudes soft. How the fuck the coach soft, too? Bro, I was so fucking tight. I'm like, man, these dudes, everyone's a fucking lame, bro. I'm like, how everybody moving lame? Bro, I'm telling you. And and one thing, I'm last thing I'm going to say, bro, I never understood just playing, like, a sport just for, like, fun and cute and games. I feel like that's women shit. Like, that's, like, no disrespect to women, but, like, that's, like, more of a, some girly shit where it's, like, you just going, yeah, let's go shoot some hoops, guys. And, like, you know, I never understood that. Like, out here, when I first moved out here, bro, I could have stories because this is what happens every fucking time. Out here, right? I moved with my friends. And, and like, I, I met, it basically, long story short, I came out with these people that I met. And we would go shoot hoops. Like, yeah, it, it, like, to them, it was like, go shoot hoops and they play soft and everything like that. But I'm shit talking the whole time. I'm like, yeah, y'all motherfuckers can't fuck with me. Like, I want the aggressiveness. I want to get the best out of them. Even if I have to get them mad. Like, yo, you suck, bro. Like, what the fuck? It's going to make that person, like, tighten up in the head. Like, yo, who the fuck? Like, we need to be aggressive as men. But, like, these guys were, like, shooting some hoops. And let's, let's have some fun, guys. I'm like, I'm like, fuck that shit, yo. And it was only one person till this day, like, out here that matches that energy. I'm like, yeah, man, yo ass shit as fuck. Like, you, I'm like, yo, man, yo ass trash as fuck. Like, for real, we going at it. But he shit talking with me against me, too. And it brings the best out of us. That is the ultimate masculine form because we are strong, supposed to be strong. The last thing I want to say, bro. The last fucking thing I want to say. Oh, like to say. And also, I like when we go shoot some hoops. Like, bro, it's not even fun playing against people who don't take the game serious or anything serious. If we're just playing and we're all dilly-dallying, it's boring. It's like when I play against bots who are out of my competition who are like trash. Like, I'll destroy them 21-0. I'm, I'd rather not play them. I'd rather just waste my, like, not waste my time. I'm literally looking for the competition. And I'm going to tell you, I got competition once out here. Actually, twice. But the one guys, one guys I never even expected, right, was crazy. So me and my homie go, and we go to these courts. And we're 1v1, and we're talking shit to each other. We're balling, for real, going at it for games. And we're kind of tired. We're not tired, but, like, we, like, what it, it's like, let's say we ran five games up to, like, 16, right? So the games go up long, but, like, I won every single one of them. Then the other guy, there's like two guys, some Spanish Puerto Rican guys who come and they're on the other side of the court shooting. They're shooting their old heads. I'm not minding them. I'm like, bro, they don't want no smoke. Like, they don't want to play us in no ball. Like, so about like 10 minutes later, they come and they're like, yo, you guys want to play 2v2? And I'm like, uh, okay, let's just watch these, get these fucking guys out of the way. And and they dressed like 55 overalls in the game, like on, on NBA 2K, like doo doo shirts, brown pants type shit, big ass like 1990 pants and shit, or shorts like all the way past their kneecaps. I underestimated my opponent, 
then, but oh, like prior while they were shooting, like we looking at them and like, man, them, they, they trash, right? Bro, when I told you those motherfuckers were like the toughest competition I played in my life, almost like the toughest in my life, were like not to the point where they're locking me up on offense. Like the games were like up 20 to 21. Like they beat us by one point. The other game was like 19 to 21. Like in the other game was like, let's say like 18 to 21, like very close games that we didn't close out. Bro, they were fucking nice. Like, on defense, they couldn't guard me. But, bro, like, I'm telling you, I have, like, the full 20. My man's getting me mad. I'm like, yo, stop. Yo, give me the fucking ball. Just watch out because I'm getting so mad. I'm like, like, we're shit-talking each other, too. These guys are shit-talking. They're talking in Spanish, this, that. They're talking in English. I'm talking my shit, this, that. It's almost leading to, like, a physical fight. That's how, like, kind of toxic it is. But that brings the masculine essence of the warrior out. It brought it out of me even though I lost. And... As I lost, I'm so fucking mad. Like, I, I felt defeated after the three games I lost in a row because that never happens. I never lose three in a row. Who the fuck? Unless I'm playing some pros. But these are people, like, I, amongst my level. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, I'm sitting down and I'm exhausted because I'm at this point I'm playing, like, ten or eight games, right? Eight or nine games, whatever. And these guys were pretty fresh, too, like, uh, off on the court. And, and like, cause I, I was, I, I honestly probably started the shit talking without me realizing. I'm like, nah, I'm probably clapping up. Like, yo, let's, like, let's play some D. Let's lock these dudes up, bro. After, bro, after the game, this dude comes up to me. I'm so mad. Like, I'm sitting on the court. Like, actually, like, yo, I feel defeat. I know what defeat feels like for real. Like, I'm like, what the fuck? I could not win. Not one. I was so mad and I was so determined to win the game, but I didn't win. So I'm like, yo, what the fuck? I understand what defeat really feels like now. <laughs> I'm like, yo, what the fuck is going on? I'm so dumbfounded by this shit. I'm sitting down, like, just breathing hard. I'm just like, man, what the fuck? I got this ball by me. I'm just sitting on the ground. I'm just mad. Like, I'm like, my other homie, he get dropped off on the regular. So, like, he was, like, very aggressive with me. But, like, it, it's like, okay, I drop him off. I literally beat him, like, five, six games. So, like, a drop off is just another drop off to him. Like, he got, he lost. But to me, I'm like, what the fuck? Like, I'm like, yo. I, what, I'm literally analyzing what I have to do better, what I got to get better on. I was like, man, my stamina, my defense, these guys were out rebounding me. Maybe I need to get my weight up, everything like that, bro. I was thinking so regularly, and I can't wait to, yo, if I ever get to play those guys again, I'm fucking destroying them. But I'm I'm sitting down, and this guy comes up to me, and he's telling me, like, like yo, don't wake up the lion. And he's saying it like, like, yo, bro, like, if you didn't get me mad, or if you didn't, like, start, like, if you didn't start shit talking or whatever, you wouldn't have gotten, like, like lost or or whatever, right? I look at this motherfucker like, shut. I'm like, yo, shut the. In my head, I say, I'm like, yo, shut the fuck up. Who you like? I'm like, what do you mean? Like, I dead ass. I'm I'm asking like, what do you mean, bro? What do you mean, lying? Don't wake up the fucking lying, yo. I'm so mad. Like, I want to fight these dudes, but like, it's like I'm not about to fight you over this game. But I'm like. Man, fuck you. Like, what do you mean? You just, you just disrespect me at this point kind of thing. Not in a way where he's actually disrespecting me. He's saying it to be like, yo, bro, if you ain't, like, get me mad. Like, it's hard to translate from Spanish to English at that point. But he's like, yo, don't wake up the line in Spanish. And I'm like, I'm like, bro. Like, in my head, I'm just thinking, shut the fuck up. And I'm like, no, this is what I, like, I actively told him, like, no, this is what I want. Like, this is what I needed. I needed competition. I was looking for it. I was craving it. And I finally got it. And I felt failure. And I lost. I'm like... I'm dumbfounded by the shit, but this is what the masculine essence is all about. Like, even after I lost, bro, like, like I can't wait to see those guys again to play ball. I swear on my life. But even as a man, this is what brought it out. Like, I'm damn near fighting over the basketball game. But, man, that was a fun time. I, I lost, and I never lose as much. But that was one of the greatest times I played ball. And I, I literally re will remember that, that game for, like, a long time. Like, a very long time, bro. So, bro, this is genuine shit that you got to realize, bro. I hope you guys understand what I'm talking about. This is real game for your fucking brain. Learn how to become better than the average Joe. Ten times better than these fucking bots. The masculine aggression must be, like, it, it's a must as a man. It's no bullshit. We're not playing games when it comes to this. Become great. Do what you got to do. Compete in almost everything you do, especially the things that you do and that you love. Even if you're playing video games, I'm sorry. You're a virgin. I'm sorry. But be at least be great at that video game. Like, don't be a fucking lame and be like, well, I'm somewhat good at the game. Like, nah, motherfucker, I'm one of the best on the game. Like, and I could tell you, like, on these games that I play, like COD and 2K and all this, I was one of the best. Like, real shit. So, 
I love y'all, bro. If y'all got anything to leave for me in the comments, leave me in, like, any, like, video ideas, leave it to me in the comment section, bro. I love y'all, bro. I'm spitting so much game for y'all, brain, bro. You guys have to understand and listen to me. Don't be a lame, bro. Listen to me. Take that advice and keep going on about your day with this shit. So, I love y'all, bro. And, um... Uh, and if you guys like this video, please make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe, bro. And I'm gonna leave my last video right here. This is how to move like a king and move like a fucking G. So you have to watch this video. This is so much knowledge. This is one of the, mo the most important, knowledgeable videos that I've made so far. So stay yourself. Stay 300. Whatever you do in life. Trust me, I believe in you, bro.